Welcome to Shared Insights, the podcast from BA Insight. My name is Pete Wright, and I'm here with our CTO, Jeff Freed. Now, you're joining us in the middle of a series of conversations around search in life sciences. We've discussed the challenges facing the life sciences industry, from regulation to R&D, clinical trials to sales and marketing. Today, Jeff is going to share the story of a pharmaceutical company looking to use search to extract quick value from their mergers and acquisitions efforts. In this example, the organization was looking to better leverage search to enhance innovation, to leverage the knowledge of their acquisitions, and really, to better know what they know. So, Jeff, what was the vision driving this case? The vision was to have a single, simple place to go to quickly find information across the company, often in, across segments that culturally were quite different. To to your point, Pete, earlier about how in m a culture tends to be quite different. Sure. One of their employees had, had sort of summed it up in a posting on their enterprise social network that said, With all these acquisitions and disparate systems, how do I find the documents I need to do my job? I'm tearing my hair out, right? Mm -hmm. They're aware that this is why their job is harder, that because of acquisitions and because of multiple systems, there are problems. And the question is, how do I find all this stuff? Or in in some cases, you an, another IT person that had gotten access to all these individual systems and was just totally swamped. And in their case, the systems included some of the ones I'd mentioned, uh, Documentum and Viva Vault and Open Text, mm-hmm. as well as First Docs, a- IBM Score, File Hold, Box, Atom Cracks, and SharePoint and File Shares. So a lot of different legacy archives to bring together into something they, they, they called RD search, right? So it's a, also another common pattern of almost all of these search-driven applications is people give them a name and you use that name for internal change management as well. They looked at this as being a bridge across disparate systems on a temporary basis. They're, they're aware that they're acquiring other companies at a rapid pace. And every time they do, they have a new set of systems. Ultimately, they get operational efficiency by retiring or rationalizing those systems and moving the content in them into a common place. But that's an expensive and often difficult process. So the use of search on a short-term basis by bridging across things is basically saying, I don't care what the system is, I'm going to index it, make it accessible, and then retire the system or rationalize it or change it while everyone has good access to it through search. Maybe I'll move everything out of it, but you know, users don't need to know or care where you are in that process. Well, and in, and in fact, sort of going back to our first case, the, the more efficiently you're able to, to integrate these systems and make those rationalization decisions, the sooner you stave off the duplication of effort challenge uh, You know that we saw balloon in the first case, yeah? Exactly. Yeah. L- you look at this from a M&A process, and an IT perspective, you're, you're rationalizing systems, you're moving content. All of that is just a tax on getting the work done and a obstacle to realizing the sort of the synergy of the acquisition. And so the, the search aspect is deploy stuff quickly to tap in an index so that you can get access to it. But, you know, a much broader audience can get access to these new systems. And that's a short-term bridge. Uh, Use the same kind of technology to figure out what's important and what you need to migrate versus what is irrelevant or unimportant. And that's sort of a midterm value that you can migrate faster, rationalize quicker because you're not trying to boil the ocean. And then a a long-term interface for all unstructured content that's much like we talked about in in the last case study of, you know, one place to go. Um, this, in their case, includes things that are all the systems I just mentioned, but also things like Coral, Era, uh, Scopus, and PharmaCircle, which were primary library research things that's external content that we help them bring into a single pane of glass in order to get that sort of best knowledge management experience. So this is a, a project similarly started with a a phase of standing up a new search 
that was you know complete, fast, and simple, and then works in successive phases that if there's a new acquisition, they basically now know how to take a sort of SWAT team, deploy connectors to the essential systems, ingest that content, make it available through search in parallel with scoping out, you know, do they need the system? Can they retire it? Can they move people off of that to some other system? Then, you know, as they move people to a different system, they have to move the content and the processes. So that's a sort of a continual cycle now of using search as a quick bridge and then a smarter migration as well as sort of this single place to go. Do you have a sense of, um, you know, sort of a measurable uh, improvement in what we'll call the M&A search onboarding process uh, now that they've they've sort of gone through it with the intention to improve their performance in that area? Yeah, I have my own observation about this, which is something that, that I, I don't quite have a name for it, Let's, but I've toyed with calling it time to insight. The time from, let's say, closing an acquisition to the rank and file in the organization being able to gain insight from the knowledge in that new system or group is something to to look at because that measures your agility and sort of time to value. Mm -hmm. And these guys have got it down to a six-week process. Wow. So that's... a uh, quite valuable, as you can imagine, in terms of this machine. And also the idea of presenting it through a familiar interface means people don't have to learn the old systems. And it's a, you know, proven to be an effective way to continually build knowledge in the organization as it goes through these waves of acquisition. That is, uh, that is fantastic, uh, especially to achieve efficiency that quickly, or, or, or let's say um, uh, potential efficiency that quickly. That is a stunning project. Yeah. This is an industry rich with opportunity, especially given the pressures and demands on search to increase transparency and efficiency. Next week, we're going to pick up right here, and Jeff is going to paint a picture of a successful intranet search implementation in life sciences. Absolutely. Thank you once again for all your readers of listening and giving us uh, feedback. If anyone has additional stories they're interested in sharing in this domain, I'm all ears. Definitely want to hear it. Again, I'll put a handy contact link uh, right in the show notes. Just uh, scroll down and, and tap the link and you'll be able to reach out to Jeff and, and share your story. We really would love to hear from you, uh, if, you are, if you are working in this field. Thank you so much for your participation. Uh, on behalf of Jeff Fried, CTO at BA Insight, I'm Pete Wright. And we'll catch you next time for more on Search in the Life Sciences right here on Shared Insights. Shared Insights.